Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. This is going to be my WWE pay-per-view predictions for Money in the Bank 2016. And uh, looking at the card, I think, or the main card anyway, you know, there's a few mediocre matches on uh, the kickoff show, but the main card itself, I think, looks quite strong. And I'm looking forward to this pay-per-view. I think this could be a, a really, really good pay-per-view if WWE pulls it off, you know, successfully. But yeah, I think it's got potential to be a really good show. So guys, here to give you my predictions as always. So, we'll start off with the kickoff matches. First one is the Golden Truth taking on Breeze Dango. So, of course, Gold is our truth taking on Tyler Breeze and Fandango. <sighs> Why is this storyline still going on? You know, they can't, like, make interesting storylines or even, like, any storylines for a lot of the guys on the roster. But they can make storylines for these fucking goofs. You know, this is just... A I just couldn't give a crap about it. I couldn't give a crap about this whole woman storyline. It's stupid. You know, it's just been a whole four or five month build up, uh, you know, to see the team of R Truth and, uh, you know, Goldust uh, form, form the team of, of uh, Golden Truth. And uh, the final formed the team, and again, I don't think anybody really cares, to be honest. Uh, Breeze Dango, it's just forced as well, to be honest. Uh, quick prediction, guys. Don't really care, but I think probably the Golden Truth will probably get the win. Uh, who would they rather see win? Probably Breeze Dango. You know, I think Tyler Breeze had potential. You know, he was great in NXT. Uh, they brought him up to the main roster and just, you know, turned him into a jobber, basically. But yeah, I like I like, uh, Tyler Breeze. He's got, like I say, good potential, but WWE just not using him correctly. Uh, Fandango's not really going anywhere, so um, yeah, I just think... Uh, they've made this Breeze Dango team just to probably job to the Golden Truth. So, prediction, Golden Truth to win, but I'd probably rather see Breeze Dango. So, uh, I'm not going to be watching it anyway, so <laughs> I'm not really too bothered. Uh, next match we have is, uh, again, another kickoff match, the Witch Dragons taking on the Dudley Boys for no apparent reason. I just don't really know why this match is taking place. I had no idea this match was taking place. I had no idea the Golden Truth and Breeze da and uh, Breeze Dango was taking place either. It's just one of these matches that I think have just come out of the blue, basically. Um, yeah, they've got no no need for these tag teams. They've they've chosen the tag teams they want in the, the tag you know the tag team title match, and these are just uh, two teams that have been left out. So I've just decided to you know, just throw them in a the match. So um, I don't know. Who's Dragons and Dudley Boys? I just, I don't know who's going to win this match, to be honest. Uh, again, both teams look like they're going nowhere. Uh, I would say Dragons, I, would, I don't know, I wouldn't mind seeing them split up. You know, I think Kalisto would probably be better just, you know, sticking with a, a singles uh, a singles run, maybe. I don't know, because let's say Sin Cara, I've never been a fan of Sin Cara. I think he's, he's botch pro and he's just, I don't know, I think he's really unreliable. Deadly, I think are quite boring. You know, even after their heel turn, I think they're better as heels, but still really boring. Uh, prediction, well since I think the good team and the Golden Truth's going to win, I'm going to say the bad team's going to win this time, and I'm going to say the Dudley Boys. Who am I going to support? Probably, probably the Dudley Boys, because I probably slightly prefer them to the Ultra Dragons, but again, I'm not bored. I want, I want the Dudleys to win, and yeah, I think the Dudleys will win. I don't think they'll have uh, two good teams go over, you know, you know, win at the kickoff show. I think they'll have one good team win and one bad team win. That's um, yeah, that's my prediction, guys, for that one. Um, I actually thought this match was going to be on uh, the kickoff show, but it is uh, Dolph Ziggler taking on Baron Corbin. Again, this is another feud. It's just it's just dragging on. It's just really boring, you know. It's just nothing to it, you know. All it's been is about bloody low blows. So at the last pay per view, uh, Baron Corbin beat Dolph Ziggler in another disqualification match. With a low blow. Perfectly legal. Perfectly legal. And like a raw, like two raws later, Dove Ziggler and Baron Corbin, or it was actually Dove Ziggler that, chal that challenged Corbin to a technical wrestling match. So, yep, they have a technical wrestling match. Um, they're both basically in the ring. Uh, Baron Corbin's in technical wrestling mode, I guess. Uh, basically, like five seconds into the match, Ziggler hits Corbin with a low blow, gets disqualified. Uh, what a dickish move by uh, Ziggler, you know, Bar poor Baron Corbin, you know. <laughs> I thought Baron Corbin was supposed to be the bad guy here. But they're giving, like, they're making Dolph Ziggler go for a low blow in a no disqualification match. 
I just don't know. I just don't think they know what they're going to do with Ziggler. I don't think they've got anything planned for Ziggler. So just give them these stupid, goofy storylines uh, about why they will blow. So, um, yeah, I think I think Baron Corbin's an innocent victim in this storyline, if I'm being perfectly honest with you guys. You know, at least Corbin beat, uh, or, you know, gave Dolph Ziggler a low blow in a no-disqualification match. But, um, like I say, this storyline's, it's crap. I'm trying to make myself, like, feel better by giving it, like, a humorous edge, but... It's a really boring storyline. Uh, I'm getting, like I said, I don't think Ziggler's going anywhere, so I'm going to go for Baron Corbin to win, and, uh, yeah, full support on Baron Corbin. I think the guy's got a great look, he's got potential, but, I don't know, WWE will screw him over, probably. Uh, next match we have is Apollo Crews taking on Sheamus in a match again that I'm not really looking forward to. Uh, I like Sheamus, I'm glad they broke up the whole League of Nations, I'm glad Sheamus is on his own now. Apollo Crews... A lot of people are actually just calling him like a, a smiling goofball. That's all he seems to do, smile. Uh, basically, I think it was like a couple of weeks ago, uh, Seamus attacked uh, Apollo Crews backstage. And like, I don't know, like 10 minutes later, Apollo Crews came out for a match. And it didn't even look like he'd been attacked. I think he came out smiling, just like nothing had, like nothing had happened. You'd think they'd like at least like make him like wimp out or you know look like he's been attacked or something, not just come out smiling like he usually does. It's bloody pathetic. Not enjoying the storyline. I want Sheamus to win, but I think Paul Cruz will probably win. But um, I just don't care about Paul Cruz. I think he's a good wrestler. He's just he's a, no character. WWE's just not giving him any character, no personality, and they've not really given us a reason to like him. So yeah. But yeah, but Polo Cruz will probably go over, but yeah, supporting Seamus. Uh, next match we have is a, a Divas, uh, no, a women's tag match, sorry. I keep, I'm still calling them women Divas, it's it's bad. But yeah, no women's title match. Um, it was surprising, I thought they'd at least had a, a women's title match. Yeah, but yeah, they're going for a tag match, they're going for the team of Charlotte and Dana Brooke taking on Natalia and Becky Lynch. Again, I'm not bored about this to be honest. I don't I don't like this you know, this rivalry is getting really silly. Uh, I think Dana Brooke will end up turning on Charlotte, maybe in this match, I hope so. You know, I thought, you know, finally Charlotte's gonna be fighting on her own. She's got rid of Rick Flair at ringside. Yeah, she's on her own, but nope, Dana Brooke's involved now. And uh, yeah, I just I can't stand Dana Brooke. I can't stand Charlotte. I can't stand well. Natalia, I guess, is alright, but I'm not a big Natalia fan, but I like Becky Lynch. I like Becky Lynch, so that's why I'm going to be supporting Natalia and Becky Lynch in this match. Uh, I think they will win. Like I say, I think Dana Brooke will probably turn on Charlotte uh, during this match, and uh, distraction will obviously lead to, I think, Natalia and Becky Lynch getting the victory. So, yeah, that's my prediction for that. Next match we have is United States Championship match between United States Champion Rusev taking on Titus O'Neil. Uh, I think this is going to be really predictable. It's obviously going to be Rusev's going to win. He's not had the title long, so it would make any sense for him to drop the title already. So, um, yeah, quick prediction, guys. Rusev's going to win. Uh, I like Titus O'Neil, don't get me wrong, but definitely going to be supporting Rusev. I think he does have potential to be a really good uh, United States champion, you know. So, uh, yeah, Rusev to win, I think, for that one. Again, there's not really been much storyline apart from Rusev attacking Titus O'Neil. And um, when Rusev's been like, attacking people like after matches, like you know Zack Ryder and stuff, uh, Titus O'Neil like, came out to you know assist the good guy and then uh, fend off Rusev. So that's really the only storyline uh, involved in this. But uh, yeah, Rusev will win. <coughs> Next match we have is the WWE Tag Team Championship match between the WWE Tag Team Champions The New Day taking on Gallows and Anderson, taking on the Vod Villains, and taking on Enzo and Big Cass. Uh, I think this will be a good match, a Fatal 4-Way uh, tag team match. The only thing I don't like about a, four, a Fatal 4-Way tag team match is there's always just two people in the ring, and like, the other teams have to like try and force tag their way in. Uh, I'd rather just made this like an all-out brawl, like you know, tornado tag, you know, a, a, an eight-man tornado tag. That would be bloody fantastic, to be honest. But uh, they're going for the the, the Fatal 4-Way Tag Team match. And um, I think this will only go two ways. I think this will either be a victory for the club or the New Day to retain. Now, I'm hoping for 
either the club to win or the Vaud Villains, but I really don't see the Vaud Villains winning. I think if the Vaud Villains were going to win, I think they would have made them win at the last pay-per-view. So, um, yeah, Enzo and Cass, I think it might be a bit too early for them. I just don't, f I think they're over with the crowd, don't get me wrong. I just don't think they're too credible yet. I'm just not really sure what they would do with the tag titles, uh, to be honest. But, um, yeah, I think, like I say, club are new day, and I'm going to go for the club. Um, Gallows and Anderson. I've got to say, guys, the the club, not maybe not the name, but Gallows and Anderson, they've really bloody grown on me. Uh, I really like them. I think they've got a great look. Uh, they've got a bloody good theme. Uh, Omen in the Sky, really, really enjoying that theme. Uh, it's probably my top ten like, favourite like, themes in the WWE at the moment, probably. Uh, maybe even just sneak into the top five. Really bloody good theme. Uh, but yeah, I really, like I said, I really like uh, Gallows and Anderson. I'm really... I'd really like them to win this match, you know. I like all the teams in this match, you know. Uh, either way, I'm going to be happy, but I just don't think they do, like, the New Day need the titles. And I think it's probably time for them, you know, to change. You know, I think the, uh, the New Day have had the titles for long enough, and yeah, I just want to see a change. So I'm going to predict Gallows and Anderson, the club, but I'm going to be supporting uh, the club, or probably or the, the Void Villains, because I like the Void Villains, I think they've got a great look, but I just don't think WWE's gonna do much with them to be honest so uh, prediction guys going for the club okay so next we have the money in the bank ladder match for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match contract so we have got Kevin Owens, Dean Ambrose, Cesaro, Sami Zayn, Alberto Adel Rio and Chris Jericho the only outcome for this match in my opinion is gonna be either Dean Ambrose or Kevin Owens I'm really not sure um, who they're going to choose, but I think it will definitely be one of those two. I think I don't think Cesaro would be that great as a world champion. Uh, I definitely think he deserves like a minor title, like the US Championship or the Intercontinental Championship. But yeah, I don't think Cesaro would be ready for the world title. Sami Zayn again, same kind of thing. They've not really built him strong. They've not really given much of you know character or personality. So yeah, Sami Zayn as world champion just wouldn't wouldn't be that great to be honest. Even though I do like him. Uh, again, I think he'd be another guy to go for a minor title, like the you know US title or something. Uh, Chris Jericho again, he's going to be leaving soon, I think, to go off with Fuzzy. So yeah, I, I don't think he's going to end up winning. I just, I just don't see any point in that. Alberto Del Rio has not got a chance in hell. He's a stupid idiot. Um, <laughs> I'm actually loving Jericho calling people stupid idiot, and I think it's absolutely fantastic. I've actually been enjoying, you know, the build-up with these uh, these six superstars, you know, when they're on top of the ladders, and I thought they were actually really, really, like, humorous and stuff. You know, I really like that segment, you know, I bet the real was starting, like, talking, like, Spanish and that, and all you hear is uh, Kevin Owens, ooh, Spanish. <laughs> you know, I just think it's been really, really funny. You know, I've, I've really, really enjoyed it, you know. But, um, yeah, I bet the real's not got a chance. Like I said, the only chance, or only two I can see winning is Kevin Owens and Ambrose, and... I'm going to go Ambrose, I think. Um, again, it's really tough to call. I think Kevin Owens would make a great world champion, in my opinion. He's great in the ring, great in the mic. Uh, he's just got a really likeable, you know, character. Kind of like arrogant, an arrogant heel. Uh, yeah, just, he plays a great part. Ambrose, I think I think they're going to do, like, give the title to Ambrose, or give the briefcase, sorry, to Ambrose, because I think they're going to go with the whole shield, you know, triple threat at some point, you know, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, and uh, Dean Ambrose. And even tonight, I think they might do a tease with Dean Ambrose, maybe like cashing in. You know, it might not do, it might not cash in, but it might tease it, you know, get the crowd going. But uh, I don't think there'll be a cash in tonight, but uh, I do see Ambrose winning uh, the, the briefcase. So if not Ambrose, it'll be Kevin Owens, but prediction-wise, I'm going Ambrose. Uh, who do I want to win? Definitely Ambrose, but if Kevin Owens wins, again, I'll, I'll be more than happy. Uh, you know, I think they're both great. But, uh, yeah, I think prediction-wise, I'm going to go for uh, Dean Ambrose, I think. Uh, next match we have is John Cena taking on AJ Styles. This match has got great potential. You know, I've been really, really enjoying, you know, the, the segments between these two. Uh, I'm actually really, you know, a big fan of how they turned AJ heel. I think it was great the way they did it. You know, I love the whole, you know, chanting thing, you know, let's go see now, AJ Styles, body electric. I'm hoping, you know, they're going to be shouting that all the way through the match. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, to be honest, I've never been a fan of Cena, but I'm actually kind of glad that he's back. You know, I mean, he's great, he's great on the mic, you know, he's, he's got a great character. 
you know, I'm just never a really big fan of seeing them in the ring. But he can put on good matches, and I think AJ Styles uh, will put on a great match with John Cena. So again, this is one of these matches that's really hard to predict. But I'm going to go. I'm going to go AJ Styles. I know I said Cena there, but yeah, I'm going to go AJ Styles. Like I said, this is going to go either way. I hope the club don't get involved. I just want to see a straight up one on one match. They might do the whole thing like what they did with Cena and Kevin Owens. AJ Styles win the first one, and then you know Cena wins the next two. I hope they don't do that. AJ Styles really, really needs this win. He really, really does, you know. Uh, all the losses he's had to Roman Reigns, you know, obviously he lost to Jericho at WrestleMania. Uh, he's had a really, really bad time of it at pay-per-views, so he needs a big win. And beating Cena would be a fantastic victory. And it would really, you know, improve his character. It'd make him, you know, real, look, look strong, basically. You know, it needs to. He needs a win. He needs a big win. And this will be his win, I think. I really do think WWE will... Uh, have AJ Styles win this match. So uh, prediction wise, go on AJ Styles and of course full support on AJ Styles. And the last match we have of course is the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match between the WWE World Heavyweight Champion Roman Reigns taking on the returning Seth Rollins. The guy that never lost the title. Uh, but yeah, I think, again, I think this could be a really, really good match. Um, we've seen what Roman Reigns can do against AJ Styles. You know, absolutely bloody fantastic matches, both of them. And uh, yet yeah, Seth Rollins again, great in the ring as well. So I think this could be a really bloody good match. Uh, I pity they hadn't like added some other stipulation, like I don't know, like no disqualification or I don't know, last man standing or something. You know, I mean they don't really do, you know, very many like you know stipulations in matches anymore. You know, it's usually just a you know straight up one on one match. But um, prediction wise, I hate, I hate to say, but I think Roman Reigns will win this match. Uh, I don't think there'll be a cash in, like I say. Uh, I'd love to see, you know, Kevin Owens or Dean Ambrose cash in, but I don't think there'll be a cash in tonight. Uh, they'll, like I say, I think they'll probably tease it, but I don't think there'll be a successful cash in tonight. I think it'll look like it's going to get cashed in, but it'll never actually get cashed in. So, um, yeah, prediction wise, I'm going to go Roman Reigns. Going to support Seth Rollins, of course. Great, you know, great to see Seth Rollins back. So, um, yeah, definitely supporting Seth, but uh, prediction wise, I hate to say it, but. Yeah, I've got to go Roman Reigns, sadly. But anyway, guys, yeah, that is it for my WWE pay-per-view predictions for Money in the Bank 2016. Um, yeah, let me know what you think, guys. Who do you think is going to win Money in the Bank? And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll catch you all in the next video, guys. And as always, hope you guys enjoy the show. I think it's got potential to be a really good show. So, uh, yeah, come on, WWE. Don't let us down. <laughs>